Hello, this is Paul with Reloading123. Thank you for chiming back into my channel. Again, we are gonna continue reloading our rifle brass. As you know, these are supposed to be lessons in a chronological order, so you can then refer right back to these videos and uh, you could kind of play them the night before you go out to reload and uh, be kind of tuned up uh, if, uh, if you're new to the reloading game. So if you recall in the last set of videos, I actually just discarded all the brass after finding some cracks in the head area. So off camera, I've gone through, I've, grand, I've grabbed 20 pieces of brand new 270 brass. I've lubed, resized, and decapped. But what I wanna show you right now is what new brass looks like sometimes out of the bag or out of the box. You're gonna see little dents occasionally in the mouth area. And I would highly encourage you, even if it's new brass, to actually resize everything. You'll uniform the neck, you'll pop out some little abnormalities, and uh, you'll have you know fresh, perfect cases to start with. The other thing I wanna show you right now, you're gonna see uh, the the brass is, was lubed and then tumbled to get the lube off the outside of the case. And with that, you're going to see the product of me pulling the brass out of the tumbler, so, you know, sifting it, getting the, the corn cob media out of the case. But you're going to see some remnants of actual corn cob in the primer flash hole because the primers are removed. Now what you're going to do is you're going to straighten a paper clip. You're going to pop the the uh, corn cob out of that hole. So you're going to do another inspection looking at each primer and you're going to look possibly even on the inside and the outside. You want to make sure that the case is completely free and clear from any kind of corn cob or walnut cleaning media that you did in the tumbling process. So with that, we are gonna continue down the path of taking a look at these cases. We're going, not only taking a look at these cases, but we're going to continue the case prep. You'll hear a lot of people say case prep sucks, and it does. Uh, this process is long and slow. Uh, several of my friends will actually do the entire case prep process and then leave the brass ready to load. I tend to leave the brass uh, cleaned and then from that point on, then we can basically do the prep process as I'm getting ready to shoot it. So um, we're going to take a look at the length. We're going to trim if necessary. We're going to chamfer the case mouths and get them ready to accept the bullets, okay? So let's see how far we can get and hopefully we'll be able to uh, finish the brass prep and maybe show you how to prime some cases. Otherwise, we'll do priming and uh, powder in the next video. So. Let's go. The process of clearing the flash hole is very simple. On the top of your screen, you're gonna see this paper clip that I kind of so that I cleaned out. The small end over here is a part that I actually used to do feel the inside of the case, if you recall, for the, the crack. And this side over here I actually use for actually just running through. And actually I'm a little bit uh, anal, so I'm gonna run through, and of course I'm at kind of a weird angle. But I'm gonna make sure each one of these primer pockets are clear. And you can actually see, possibly not on camera that they are, the two that are suspect that actually have corn media in them are these two. And uh, you just basically just pop them out. You can kind of push, you can do a number of different things, but it, they usually just pop out pretty easy. But you wanna make sure the case is completely free and clear of any debris uh, during that reloading process, of course. Makes sense to you, right? I'm sure. There you go. In the pistol video, you saw me uh, quite in a quite detailed fashion prepare the primer pockets, and you will uh, do that exact same thing with the rifle brass. You are going to take any any one any tool essentially that you've got. This is going to be the quick version of this explanation. Obviously, there's a few of them here, and you're going to take any one of these tools essentially and you are going to then clean the inside of this. Of course, this particular, these particular primer pockets rather, are spotless because they are brand new, but you'll take the, the, the tool, whether you use this blade, you clean this out. Here's a different style of blade. You'll use it to clean out 
this primer pocket you can use what this is the Crocker Gator I think this is now made by by Dewey you can use this to, to clean the primer pocket out and you've seen some more advanced tools in my other videos so you'll do you'll clean the primer pocket that way and that's as far that you, is that you actually have to take it um, would be my recommendation but if you remember on the pistol uh, reloading. I told you you really didn't have to do the primer pockets, which I still uh, agree with. But on the rifle, since we typically are, are interested in, in accuracy and we're trying to squeeze the la every bit of accuracy out, I would encourage you to, to clean the primer pockets as best as you possibly can. So once the primer pockets are clean, we need to make sure that we that this brass is within spec so what you're going to do is you're going to pull out the book and you're going to find out what the actual length is supposed to be and i'm just going to actually pull out the uh the hornady book real fast because it was the first book that came, that i had handy and i am going to open it up to 270. my friends are going to say you should have been prepared and it's usually not too bad. Looks like I've already got a to that's, a, that's my research for a different load. Um, well, interesting that, there we go, short magnum. You know, this is actually, you know, as you can see here, make sure there's a lot of things, you know, I'm using 270, but there's a lot of things that say 270. So make sure you get the right caliber. You know, obviously you never want to make the mistake of mixing up something like 270 or 270 Winchester short magnum with the regular 270, right guys? So let's make sure we get the right caliber. It's always, the, cal the correct caliber is always printed um, on the, typically on the barrel of your gun. And in this situation, it is a 270 Winchester shot through a um, Weatherby Mark V. So what we're going to do is case trim length. You see that right there? Case trim length, and then there's a maximum length. So basically, this is where you, the trim length is where you want to trim to. So 2.53. So we are going to set up our caliper, and there's lots of videos and I think I did some close-ups that show you exactly how to zero your caliber caliper properly but we're going to do the best job that we can to zero it going to lock down the dial face and then we're going to measure some of these and if we're just going to make sure and my guess since these are brand new um, this doesn't exactly help me show you the trimming which I will show you um, these come out as 2.537. So it is right in between the trim and the max, in which case I probably will leave it. We're going to try this one. Also 2.537 and also 2.535. So clearly they're all right in there. Five, three, five. Two point five, three, five. So based on this fact that this is new brass, it is all the same. We are not going to trim this particular brass. We are going to just get it ready to accept the bullet and move on. I will show you trimming in a separate video with brass that needs to be trimmed. So that said, we are going to switch gears. I'm going to show you how to trim the, well, excuse me, not really trim, but chamfer the, the case mouth to accept the bullet. Okay, undoubtedly your kit or somewhere along the way you've purchased the trimmer. Uh, Boy, goodness, the chamfer tool. This chamfer tool is um, kind of the standard looking tool. Some have different number of cutting edges, et cetera, et cetera. In this particular case, this chamfers the inside on the left side of the picture, chamfers the outside, just takes the, the sharp edge off the outside of the case. This is very, very common and popular as a standard chamfering tool in your kit or case or whatever you buy in the store. I, this is a great tool for 
pistol, you will use this side primarily for pistol, this side you will use for both pistol and rifle. When it comes to rifle, this happens to be the Lyman uh, very low drag tool. I prefer this tool for rifle and what you're going to quickly see is that it, it has a much, uh, you could probably say, uh, gentler angle on the chamfer on the inside of the neck and when you're re rifle reloading that actually allows the bullet to seat a lot easier and with with less resistance and depending on if how the bullet is that could be significant so on a bullet that has a flat base design like this you're actually going to find that this is very much more forgiving to slide in as opposed to it hitting a sharper edge on this particular tool. I use a lot of these bullets for my deer hunting primarily uh, because they are inexpensive and they get the job done. So my recommendation is if this is the tool that you've got, use it. Um, I prefer this style tool. There's a lot of versions of this. I believe Sinclair. I think everybody actually has a very low drag tool. It's The process is very, very simple. You're actually going to run this tool on the inside. Now what you really want to do is you're going to, you're going to hold the case, you're going to spin the tool, and you really want to take up actually a fairly nice amount of material out on the inside. And we'll see if I can't take some close-ups on the screen of what that looks like. But you really Really want to take a, a, a good amount out and I will give you a close-up here in a moment and then on the outside it gives you obviously there's a horrible noise but you're just going to just gently take the outside um, any kind of a, um, a lip on the outside off and then you're done and you're just going to do that to every single piece and you're again you're going to try to keep the tool as this tool's getting away. Uh, as level as possible. So you really don't want to do one of these. Obviously that's changing the chamfer considerably, right? So you want to keep that chamfer tool as perfectly aligned as possible. Take a pretty good bite out of it and you're going to find out what that, that bite looks like. You want to make sure you don't cut into the, you know, the, the uh, all the way through of course, but you're going to give it a pretty good cut and then you're done. And you will undoubtedly do this every time you trim. So every time, so not every time you reload, but every time you trim, uh, you'll find that once you shoot, that chamfer doesn't go away. But the case does get, in fact, get longer. So once when you trim this back down, it squares off the edge. You'll then go back and use these two tools to uh, to clean it up. So that's the, that's the chamfering process on the inside and then of course on the outside. So I'm going to do that with the rest of these cases and then we're going to move on. So as I'm finishing these, what I, I guess I want to show you is that you can go through these pretty quick. My recommendation is you wouldn't change tools midway. Do all the inside and then do all the outsides in order to keep this process going fast. Uh, it can be it's time consuming and painfully slow, but you're going to see pretty quick that it, there, you know, quite a bit of material is taken off the inside of the necks here. So I'm basically just doing the inside reaming, ah, excuse me, inside chamfering and then taking a quick visual inspection with the light kind of reflecting off of it and then coming back through and doing the quick quick uh, one-two punch on the outside. Doesn't take much on the outside and, you, and since I really didn't trim these I'm just doing a quick little touch up but that's how fast it can be. It doesn't have to be this long long process. You really just want to take that outer edge off if you feel one. I really don't feel one so that's why this process is going so quickly. So hopefully that, that helps uh, explain that a little bit. Also on a side note, I've actually dropped one of these before and managed to chip the cutting edge off the inside of this. And it just happened to be right on the spot where it was cutting like 45 ACP cases. And of course, since you still have three or four or five cutting edges, it still worked just fine. But 
uh, it was kind of a bummer the where it hit. It kind of made things uh, a little bit goofy and it would kind of dig in. Also, I, I like to use these pill bottles to, as you know already, to keep everything from getting damaged. So you'll also see that, you know, the end of this process, there's quite a bit of material left you know, that, that, uh, that was taken off. I think you could probably see that. So you want to, I mean, you're, you're going to be taking off some meat as you can see it kind of swept up there in the image. Okay, you guys, I think I'm going to leave this video right where it's at. And that way when I come back, I'll be able to show you the primer seating process on and off the press. And then we're going to go through the powder measuring and dispensing process again and the bullet seating. The truth is, uh, if you look at the pistol videos, it is exactly the same processes as rifles. So, you, you know, you really have your option. You can just cut right to the pistol, uh, you know, priming, uh, powder dispensing, bullet seating sections, or you can just uh, can wait till the uh, next installment. But thanks you guys for chiming in. Please subscribe if you like these videos. I'm gonna finish this series, then go into more detailed um, you know, concentricity, a number of different, more advanced options for reloading. Uh, also, uh, chat with me. Tell me what you think. Tell me what I can do to further clarify or to help you with further videos. So, until then, thank you very much. This is Paul with Reloading123. Have a great day.